Hey all, and welcome back to Fuzzy Dutchy Gaming and the fourth instalment of the Tornado Shot League Start Guide. This is going to be looking at pinnacle bosses through to basically picking up your omniscience. So what this episode is going to cover is how to gear up to a standard that's good enough to freely farm T16 maps, do Conquerors and Guardians if you need to, but we're not going to get up to the levels of doing Uber, Elder and Maven um, because if you're not going omniscience, it's going to cost a lot to get that sort of DPS. We are going to take those bosses on, but we're not going to do it until we've got a character in a better position. Now, it would be ideal to get all your four void zones straight away, but you really don't need to. We can have ample map sustain with the tree that we've taken. We're going to get in boss maps. We're going to be doing maps really quickly, so we're going to be getting invitations fairly regularly. And it should not take long at all to farm the money at League Start needed to get your omniscience um, and get up and running. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to transition to the crit variant because let's be honest, our gear at the moment is pretty trash if we're looking at what we had um, in the last video. So I'm going to link a video which I linked in the previous guide. And this is basically the gear that you need to get your character comfortably farming T16 maps. It shows you what to buy, how to craft. All I'm going to do in this part of the video here is just go through a couple of things that may affect um, your crafting, your purchasing, and your overall cost of your character. Um, so I think all of the items in the video should be fine at a League Start environment, and they shouldn't be wildly differently priced to the R when the video was recorded. The only difference is going to be the bow. Now, when I made the first guide, no one was really playing like cheaper versions of Tornado Shot, so the bases for the bows were available for like anywhere from 15 to 30 chaos. When I've gone to buy my bow for this character, the minimum starts at like a divine and then it goes up even more than that for the fractured bases I was looking for. And it's really not worth it to guarantee some of the stats. Um, so the first thing I want to do is go through the bow because this is probably, other than the boots, going to be the most difficult and most expensive bit to craft. But it's also the most important because getting a bow that isn't quite right is going to affect all of your other stats. So the bow I've settled with is a spine bow with fractured crit because this was the cheapest fractured mod i could find at the time i think it was about 20 chaos uh, and then i basically spammed essences i'm either going to spam um anger for fire i'm going to do hatred for cold and i'm going to do wrath for lightning and all i'm looking for is a second decent damage roll and either attack speed or a suffix to craft attack speed what we're going to do is run through a few different fracture bases in a few different scenarios to show you the odds of hitting it, basically. Um, I've only used um, Shrieking Essences, but if you wanted to and you can afford it, Deafening would be better. So let's say for the purposes of this video, I want a fractured crit base. Let's just make sure I wasn't lucky and got the only one that was available. Um, essentially, there'll be a list on the screen now which shows you any of the fractures that you can go for for this bow, and they will all work. Some are more ideal than others. All we really want to do is guarantee some sort of mod that helps us so that it's one less mod we have to worry about when we're essentially essence spamming. We're doing like Chris Wilson, shut your eyes and pray crafting because we don't want to be spending 9, 10, 12 divines um, crafting a bow at this stage because we want all our funds to be able to go towards omniscience because that's going to make the biggest difference um, to DPS. So let's go to trade. Now we're going to look, we're not actually going to look for a spine bow. We're going to look for bows with similar attributes because there are other bows in the same model as spine bow and all they have is slightly less physical dps and actually for our build it probably helps because i've actually died to a couple of fizz reflect maps uh, with my bow so the lower might actually be better and um, so all we're going to do is spine bows have a minimum crit of 6.5 percent so we're going to go 6.5 percent and they have a tax per second of 1.4 uh, we don't want it to be corrupted um, we don't really need to do the fracture because we're going to be forcing the fractured mod. Um, so we go fracture, critical strike chance. The maximum you can roll is 38. So let's say we want to do 35. I don't know if it's 0.35. It isn't. Um, so here we've got bows which we can use. Ah, actually, we're going to need to change this if we're looking for fractured. Let's put that to 7.75. Um, so here it's going to bring us up the option. So we have an ivory bow, which is exactly the same base as a spine bow, 10 chaos, T1, critical strike chance, fractured. And um, we keep going down, another ivory bow again, uh, crit chance, fractured. You can pick that up, 15 chaos, spine bow, 18 chaos, um, ivory bow again, one exalt, 20C. So there's tons for that sort of 
um, price. So the next thing we want to look for um, is just to check attack speed. Essentially, attack speed and crit roll about the same in terms of odds on an item. So you want one or the other as your fractured base if fractured early damage is too expensive. And at the moment, it is. Um, so what we're going to do here is put the crit chance back down to 6.5 because that's the base for the bow. And we're going to set the attacks per second at 1.55. And then we're just going to say fractured attack speed. And this time it has to be local. It doesn't really matter what it is because we've set our minimum there. And then we'll go and search. So again, there's ample available. Um, so Marraketh bow would work. Um, as you know, ignore the Marraketh bow because that's got crit chance rolled on it. Um, so ivory bow again will work. We've got 1.6 overall attacks per second, which is kind of what you're looking for as a base. Um, Steelwood bow would work. Obviously, spine bow will work at 20C. Another spine bow at 20C. So these are the two that I would aim for. Attack speed or crit if you need to do it cheaper because the elemental damage ones are too expensive. So then how do we craft on it? So what we're going to do is just go on to Craft of Exile. And this is what I would use to help you understand how much money it might cost to hit these mods. And all of these currencies here that it uses for craft and it works out from POE Ninja prices. So give or take, this should be about right. For essences, they might be slightly under because if you're buying in bulk, you're going to pay a bit more than the POE prices, uh, so POE Ninja prices. So we've got a base that has fractured attack speed. So what we're interested in is if we have fractured attack speed or fractured crit, um, which is a suffix, so we don't need to worry about them, what are the odds of me rolling two big damage mods in one? So we need to see how we're going to craft these prefixes to get a half decent bow. We've already got our attack speed guaranteed. Um, let's say we've got T2 at 16%. That's what our attack speed is fractured at. So we need crit chance and we need some Ellie damage. This stage, two lots of Ellie damage should be fine as long as they're decent rolls. So what we're going to use is essences of either wrath, hatred, or anger. I would use deafening if you can afford to. If they're too expensive, you shriek him. And what we're going to look for is another elemental roll. So let's say we're using Essences of Wrath because Lightning is the, the thing that we want to guarantee because it's going to make Trinity easier. You then get to Fire Damage and tick the tier that you're happy with. So we're going to say I would be happy with a secondary roll of T3. And that same for Cold. What you're then going to do is go up here and you're going to click how you want to craft and it's going to be Essences of Wrath. Okay, so we've set our mods up that we want on our bow we want fire damage or we want cold damage we're going to guarantee lightning with our essence we've already got attack speed with our fracture and what we're looking to do is hope that when we hit there's an open suffix to craft crit if not we'll either annul or just go again and what this is saying is it's going to cost me 2100 chaos orb to craft my bow now i'll just explain this very quickly what this is doing is looking at your prefix grouped on your item so where you have six mods on an item You'll have three prefixes and three suffixes. What this is saying is that you want these mods to occupy their own prefix. What we want to do for the bow we're crafting is actually move this together because we want either T3 cold and above or T3 fire and above. What that then does is calculate what the odds are of hitting any of those with one essence. And it's, a, and it's essentially every 11 tries on average, you're going to hit something you can use. It obviously needs an open suffix to craft crit, or you need to roll crit. But if it doesn't, it's just another 11 essences. If you're using Shrieking, a league start, they're probably 2C each. So you're probably looking 22 chaos on average to roll this. Let's say it takes you three to get an open suffix, that's 66 chaos. Add that onto the bow that you've bought for, say, 20C. You're looking at 85 to 90 chaos to craft a bow that's going to be really decent. And, you know, you could sell it if you wanted to, but really we're just looking to craft the bow to use. And that's what I did to craft my item. So I've got this bow here. I could make this better because I'd rather it be lightning, but I run out of wrath essences and I didn't want to go wasting currency because I had some anger and some hatred essences. So I just used them. I hit this. My bow is the other way around. I went for fractured crit, crafted attack speed. And that's how we've crafted the bow. And that's the first item we need to move over to a crit variant. Okay, next item. This is another one that will differ from the guide because. In the guide, I recommend getting a Tornado Shot Fires an additional secondary projectile enchanted helmet with either evasion armor or a hybrid base. They're really expensive at the moment because um, a lot of people are trying different Tornado Shot builds. So I would go for one of the alternatives for your kind of league start build, which is either going to be Tornado Shot Damage, Tornado Shot Crit Chance, 
or anything else that might benefit is you could go for like determination reservation uh, grace reservation anything you want that we use a skill for you can have as your enchant um so just look for a decent evasion or armor evasion or possibly even armor base for this helmet uh, and then we're going to craft on it anyway other than that everything that i've put in the video should still be applicable in terms of the items that you buy but essentially you're looking to buy fractured bases with something that we want on the item so here i've gone fractured crit fractured cold resistance here i haven't because this ring is not actually too bad so i'm going to keep it um, the gloves i've just recrafted because i needed more resistances uh, and the boots is an item I will cover specifically in this video because this is the one item I think you need to make sure you get to make your farming comfortable. But essentially, you're looking to upgrade your gear so that you can then go crit and drop resolute technique. There is lots of changes you're going to make on the skill tree. This is the final tree here. You're going to need, I would think, about 20 regrets, maybe 25 um, to unspec certain points, put ones back in. This is a level 89 tree. Um, so all we've done is we're actually obviously taking all the crit nodes we weren't taking before because it didn't have a benefit. So we're taking the crit nodes here, uh, taking the projectile crit nodes here, taking obviously the crit nodes uh, here, and then again we're taking the crit nodes here, I think they are, no, here. Um, so we're taking all these crit nodes to make it really easy to get around 80% crit chance. So at the moment, um, if I get my inspiration going, I have a crit chance of. 75%. I then pop my flask. I've got 90% crit chance, which is absolutely fine. I still have these two to take as well. So I'm basically going to have very close to 100% crit chance uh, once I get my next two points. And you want to be aiming for at least 80% uh, because when you crit, we obviously get our crit multi damage. We're going to apply um, shock, chill. Um, so that's your first goal is to get your gear up. If you don't have any currency, just go and farm your essences in lower tier maps or if you've gone for a more balanced tree with things like uh, harvest and expedition farm those get your currency get your upgrades we want to be spending nearly all of the currency that we've got at the moment to get our build as good as we can and then we're just going to farm and then we're not going to spend a penny until we get ammunition so the next item i would recommend you upgrade and it's going to be expensive early on but i think it's going to make a massive difference to quality of life and it's an item that's going to stay with you through the whole build. And that's getting some boots that have basically 55% ailment avoidance on them. And the way you're going to do this is, again, fractured base. I recommend movement speed of 25% or more. These are normally dirt cheap. Um, I was buying these early on this league, and they were about 5 to 10 cast. They were not expensive at all. The reason we want that is because we need movement speed, really. We want to guarantee it. And you can craft up to 70 life on boots. I just got unlucky. Um, I need to recraft them. Um, but you can craft up to 70 life on boots. And we can force almond avoidance with essences. These boots, in terms of price, depends on how lucky you get with your essence. Because we need 35%. I rolled 35% of my essence, which means I only needed the second lowest tier of ailment avoidance with my eldritch orbs which are greater if you roll something like 33 percent you're then going to need to go to grand if you roll less than 33 percent i would just re-roll with essences because you're then going to need to go um, exceptional which is way too expensive um so let's say you roll a mid-tier of 33 percent all you're looking for is an open prefix for life and suffixes that do something so these are actually really good because they give cold resistance. They give dex for when I go to omniscience, it actually does something. And then I can craft my movement speed with an open prefix. Essentially, you are spamming these essences until you hit minimum of 33% ailment avoid and stats that you're happy with. And it's then onto the Eldritch implicits. If you need 22% or 23%, you're going to have to roll with grand until you hit ailment avoid. If not, you can go with greater. It is going to be expensive because the odds are about 50 to 1 to hit this mod. But once we've got it, we can then craft ailment avoid on the chest and we are 100% ailment cap, which just makes a huge difference. You're not getting shocked by essence monsters. You're not getting ignited. Um, you're not getting chilled or frozen. It's just really, really good quality of life. It might cost you 150 to 200 chaos to craft these boots, but they're going to be well worth it because they're going to stay with your character for the whole time. Um, and they're the things I would concentrate your money on bow and boots everything else you can do on a budget so we've now got our crit up we've got our almond boots and we've got our bow five socketed and five linked it again which i've 
obviously paid for, which is not a lot. 150 fusions is not a huge amount of money. And then I've started using Elder Drops on my gear. Now, I am looking for specific mods, but I'm not necessarily hunting them because it's very expensive to do at this stage of the game. So I did get lucky here and basically got the implicits that I was aiming for, which is Fizz taken as Ellie and reduced mana cost of attacks. But you would basically hit them until you hit something that you're happy with. Now, with helmets, you get, I would say, 85% of mods on helmets are spell related. Do helmet last because although it's important, it's very difficult to hit the mods that we want. You basically after either fizz taken as elemental or mana reservation efficiency of skills, which is very rare, and reduced mana cost of attacks is about the only one we want um, for the Exarch influence. So for the gloves, you've got loads of different things you can have. You've got spell suppression, you've got intimidate on hit, you've got attack speed, you've got um, Ellie damage to attacks. There, there, there's loads. Basically, just roll until you hit something that's decent, which is what I've done. Um, so I've hit spell suppression and attack speed. Was happy with those. On the chest, again, there's lots of different things we can hit. There'd be grace effect, determination effect, aura effect, crit multi, crit chance, armor, evasion, loads and loads of mods that are beneficial. Again, just roll until you hit something that gives you anything, really, um, because this gear is probably all going to be replaced at some point further down the line. So don't go spending like divines to get your perfect implicits when we're going to probably be dumping this chest piece at some point. And then the only other thing I'd recommend when you're crafting your gear, especially on your pure evasion basis, is try and get some spell suppression. So I've picked up 13 on my helmet and then 5 as an implicit on these gloves. And it means I'm spell suppressed cap from this tree and my gear. If I can get even more on gear, I can drop these two notes here. So the next section of the video, we're looking at the last item that I think you need at this stage, which is a brutal restraint. This is just to say I keep calling it lethal pride in all of these sections coming up. Not lethal pride, it's brutal restraint. And then the last thing I think you should be going for, if you haven't rushed to this stage and it's not like 24 hours into the league, as long as you're on day two or three, it's now time to buy a lethal pride jewel. I'm going to run through how to purchase that jewel in a second. This is the sort of skill tree that you want. It will be in the POB. If you're any levels less than this, because this is a 92 tree, you'd probably just drop these crit notes here. I would recommend you're at least 90. This is a 92 tree. If you're 90, you could drop these two. If you're 88, you could drop another two here. Um, but we essentially need three jewel sockets. We need one for our Conqueror's of Replica Efficiency, one for the Lion Eyes, and then one for Brutal Restraint. Um, and for the Brutal Restraint, we're looking for Stun, Avoidance, and Onslaught on Kill. Um, but I'll go through that right now. So all we do is go Timeless Jewel Finder. So I'm going to find a Brutal Restraint to slot in here. It shows you what jewel socket you're looking at. Uh, if you hover over it, and it will firstly give you the ones that you've got. So it's this one that we want. It doesn't matter um, who it's conquered by. That's only if you are bothered about the keystone. Click filter nodes because that's only going to look at the nodes we've got selected on our tree. And then we're going to go and search for the nodes we want. And we essentially want onslaught. And the next one is ailment avoid. It's not actually ailment avoid, it's stun avoid. If we can get a couple in there, that'd be really good. Um, and then we search. And it's going to give us all these numbers here and we need to go into the trade site and search for it and um, there are other tools you can use to auto search it but i have no idea on the safety of them security or anything like that so i'm not touching them um i'm just going to do it the slow way so we'll bring up trade and um, then all you would need to do is look at the three congress so it's asanath nasima and balbala okay and then all we do is we put the numbers in here for these jewels so we don't need anything like ridiculous so the first one is onslaught which obviously only one and the second one um so we'll try this one first seven four seven five hundred c mm, i'd still rather be pay cheap because it's not even that good a jewel yeah cool okay so we've now got our brutal restraint so we're now 99 percent stun immune because we actually need 24 on the chest to be stun immune now the annoying thing is we need the 25 on the chest as well for ailment avoidance. So we're going to do something silly and try and re-roll. It's six alchemies a time. We've got enough to do about 15 rolls. We've got about 12 scours. Um, so let's go. Now this is super unlikely to actually hit. But the other option is to elevate our boots, which is going to cost way more than however many chances it takes to roll this. There we go. Hit it. Okay, so we now should be 100 and 100. Perfect. Shock, freeze, chill, ignite, stun, avoid. That's exactly what we wanted. I'm now much more happy uh, with life. 
So that was a bit waffly. It's just really, really important that you get these aspects right. So I'm just going to bullet point everything now. So get a new bow. Get your enchanted helmet with whatever enchant you can afford. Get your almond boots crafted. And then if you haven't yet, upgrade your items with fractured items and craft them with essences. Other important things to note are you want to have been farming syndicate because you need unveils. You need minus mana cost of skills. You definitely need this one on the quiver, crit chance and frenzy on crit. Very, very important. Need that as well. The gloves, again, there's tons of good unveils. So don't ever have empty gym missions when you're at this stage of the game. Um, and then from here, we should be in a position to just carry on our Atlas grind. Now, you are still going to take deaths because you're going to end up with hideous maps still. I have had the most horrendous run of maps in that I haven't really been able to get through a map without dying. I'm getting ones with like 59% monster life, 40% increase attack speed, double fizzers, Ellie, and every single map I corrupt is going eight mod, which later on down the line is what you want when you just want to get that map done for completion and it's a horrible map with a horrible layout and a horrible boss, it isn't what you want. But I'm not getting deterred by it because I know once it's done, it's done. And um, so I've only leveled up one level and I must have done about 30 maps since the last video. I'm not, I'm not fussed about it. My Atlas completion is getting there. I've only got 14 more maps to do. That bit is then done. I don't have to touch it again. I can then really start grinding and making some currency. So from here, what do you want to do? Essentially, like I've said, get your Atlas completion done as much as possible because it's going to give you more points. But at 108 points in total, I've got the tree I want and everything else I get is just a bonus. I can maybe add in some strong boxes um, into the tree. What I've done for my tree is gone essences, stream of consciousness, blocked every single mechanic that's available because I just want to see more essences gone exarc and then i've basically gone for all of the boss rush nodes which give bosses a chance for maps to drop because i'm building a mapping character i'm going to be mapping quickly i don't want to be in trade very much or so don't want to do stuff like um you know legion breach stuff like that because i don't want to have to sell loads of different things and i'm not a massive tft fan so i tend to not go on there so this for me works really well i can just farm maps and every couple of hours i can go into my stash see how many boss maps i've got Early game, these go for an absolute fortune in terms of currency, and I'll just get them up for sale and sell them as quickly as I can. And then from there, once I've got my Atlas completion, I'm just speed grinding. Every 28 maps, my invitation is going to sell. I'm going to sell my boss maps. I'm only going to run the stuff if I need to. So Maven, for example, I'm going to need to do Maven at some point. So I need to think about doing um, some invitations. So again, if they drop, I might keep a couple of them and a set of the boss maps to do it. But other than that, I'm selling all of my boss maps and that's where I'm going to make my currency is going to be from Eldritch Orbs, boss maps and just general currency from your um, influence mobs. I'm pretty sure in no time at all I'm going to be able to buy my omniscience and then we can go and really ramp it up um, to end game. And that's really all you need to do. It's all about gear and gearing up your character from this stage. And now is the part where you grind. So this is my tree I'm using. It's a boss Russian tree and I'll be honest, I don't think it's right for this stage of the game. Um, if you followed it, don't worry, you will make money. Uh, if I go into my stash, I basically run two rounds of invitations, let's call it, since I've killed the introduction pinnacle bosses. So that's 56 maps. This is what my dump tab looks like with stuff that can sell, you know, really, really quickly. And I've also got a tab full of decent essences. So if we go into excellence next, it's basically telling me I've got seven divines worth of loot in just that sale tab and my essence tab. Obviously, it needs to be taken with a pinch of salt because it's probably valuing some essences that are chaos that are not anywhere near that much. But it also underprices big essences and it doesn't price up uh, Elder Guardian and Conqueror maps. So overall, I think I've probably got more than seven divines in this group of things that I could sell easily. It's probably seven and a half. So that's that's around three and a half divines, four divines per rotation of your invitation. So every 28 maps. So it's good, but I think you can make a lot more with another tree. And that's all the rest of the video is going to be is me testing out a couple of different farming strategies. So I've done my 56 rotations of maps on my boss Russian tree, and I've got seven to eight divines, which is well on the way to an omniscience. I'm going to try two more strategies that I think would work. I'll include all the full trees and all the profit breakdowns so you can decide what works best for you in terms of your tree. So you get your omniscience on board. It's just a matter of time. 
You just have to make sure you are not wasting time. This part of the game is key and it's where people give up because they don't get the items they want. They can see all their friends get an omniscience or grinder for a headhunter or starting to get the currency towards a mage blood. And you're sitting there with maybe three divines because you're only getting three to four maps done an hour. Efficiency is key, which is why the Atlas tree is super important because it needs to be content that you enjoy. So look at the different strategies I'm going to give you, but don't just pick the one because it makes a divine more. Pick the one that looks fun for you. I will still probably end up doing this boss rushing tree, even though it's not the most efficient because it's what I enjoy. So it's efficient to me because I'm getting stuff done quickly. Um, so I'll leave this bit of the video here. Next bit of the video is just going to be me going over um, the profit from the next two different scenarios. And then we'll go and buy an omniscience with the currency we've made. And then we'll start ramping the build up. So the next strategy that we're going to do to make some money is basically getting in as much content as we can on an hour can go. Now I've dropped essences because I've just taken too many deaths where there is an absolute bullshit combination of arch nemesis mods that you literally can't defeat without dying. I've just had one that was a combination of three tank mods and it took me longer to kill than one of the guardian invitations would have taken and I would have died less times in the invitation and it was all for two screaming essences. Um, it was just a broken combination where it, they're designed for a single monster and it gives auras to other monsters but when there's two of those monsters and they give that aura to each other it makes them almost impossible to kill um so yeah essence is gone they've really annoyed me for the money they're not worth it now harvest an expedition you can get the same problem but at least the loot is worth it like if you super super juice an expedition i don't care dying three times if i'm going to get 10 burial medallions and a logbook out of it i do mind dying two times to an essence monster when i get two essences dropped that are one c each so I finished the farming session on the second strategy, which was Harvest, Delirium, and Expedition. Uh, we'll run through the loot. I've only done one loop of Invitation, so it's 28 maps, just because these maps take a lot longer when you get Harvest and Expedition in. Um, they're not quite twice as long, but it wouldn't be fair to do 56 maps with this strategy because it would take at least 1.5 to 1.7 times longer to get them done. Um, but just from this 28 maps, we've had an absolute amazing haul. So if we go over to excellence next, apologies if you can hear the kitties in the background, um, it's 4.3 divines for all the stuff I've stashed in the tab, but there's lots of stuff it doesn't calculate. So it doesn't do sacred blossom, um, which I think is 2.7 divines. It doesn't do this map because it thinks it's just a fungal hollow map. It doesn't do any of the log books. Three of them are Tujan. Doesn't do the formed invitation and doesn't do the Memories, although they're not worth a huge amount. Um, so I would think I've got at least five divine stuff here as well. Which if we add on to what Excellence Next says, it's about nine to ten divines I think I've got for that farming session. Added on to the seven divines we got earlier, I'm pretty sure we can then raid our stash for bits and bobs, sell them, and we've got enough to get uh, on omniscience. So all I'm going to do for selling this is literally undercut people. Only by a chaos or two chaos. I just want it to show up in people's auto searches so then automatically I get dinged. And for purchase, I can sell it. I only want to spend 15 minutes really selling all this stuff. And so I'm going to sort it all from this tab and the tab I had before, get it all into one of my premium tabs, sell it. And then I'll be back with you in terms of how much you've got and whether we can get our omniscience going.
Uh, so I've liquidated pretty much everything I own. I've got rid of all my harvest use. So I've got rid of most of my Eldritch currency other than the Eater Wells because I, I don't farm that. Um, loads of my essences have gone. We've still got a few things to sell, but literally we have got rid of almost everything. So I did spend about an hour selling everything myself because I couldn't afford to go to a trader, which I wouldn't do anyway. Uh, but I couldn't afford it because I need all of my currency to get this omniscience amulet. Um, so we've just received our whisper from the guy who's selling it. He's selling it for 14 divines. So I was just about to go and buy another divine because it looked like it was 15. Um, but this guy has uh, belatedly got back to me, which is cool. Nope, you can't. Cool. Right. So that is our omniscience acquired, which was the whole purpose of this video. So it's not the end of it. You can't just stick on an omniscience and be good. We're going to have to now respect the tree, uh, grind more currency to get more gear, but the rest of the gear should be fairly cheap um, or easy to craft. So I'm going to call it there for this video. The whole purpose of it was to show you how quickly you can get an omniscience um, starting from scratch. I've essentially done 84 maps. I've done three rotations of the invitation starting from when you first kill both bosses on the intro quest. So basically you've completed two T16 maps and it was 84 maps and I've grinded like 15 divines um, to get this omniscience, including kind of gearing my character. And that's why I kind of wanted to bring these videos out in stages because I want to show you how to do each part. Um, so that's it for this video. We've got the amulet we need and now we're going to be absolutely rock and rolling in the next episode. And I'm really looking forward to getting the rest of the gear together and then really trouncing content. Hope you join me for the next one. It's going to basically take this build from mediocre DPS to hopefully clearing most of the content um, in the game in regards to like a mapping character and then get the other two void stones sorted out. So thank you very much. I know it's been a super long episode. Appreciate everyone. See you next time.